Hi everyone. Today we're going to go over setting up the ArduCam with an SD card um, reader slash writer in order for us to be able to take pictures with the ArduCam um, and store them into the SD card. And of course, we're going to use the Arduino Due. Um, here I have a quick um, schematic, or sorry, um, a wiring diagram of how everything is supposed to be connected. And I'm going to walk um, through all of these steps with you. Um, so first of all, um, uh, so again, this is an ArduCam OV5642, um, and this is our SD card reader. So it's an SD card reader slash writer because uh, you're actually supposed to plug an uh, SD card into this. Um, uh, you can either use one of the big SD cards or a micro SD card like this. I like to use this combination where you can easily just, you plug in the micro SD card into here, and then you can use this, oops, oops, to plug, you know, from the top, you slide it into here and it clicks and that's how it's plugged in. Um, so these are the ones on Amazon. You guys actually, um, we, we sent you guys a different SD card reader and that one is actually um, not working properly because there's a design issue with its spy interface that only allows it to use one spy device, which is not how spy works and they messed up. So basically I had to um, uh, order a different um, SD card reader and I found that this one actually works as it should and so you can definitely use this with another spy device which in our case would be the ArduCam. It uses the spy interface in order to send its pictures to the Arduino Due um, and you know in this case back to the uh, SD card reader um, and and then we also have the I2C bus, which is just what's used to configure the camera. Um, and what I mean by that is that uh, the ArduCam basically has a program inside this chip right here, and it basically lets Arduino do a know that, hey, I am an ArduCam OV5642. These are all my properties, blah, blah, blah. Um, stuff that we don't need to know <laughs> how exactly what's going on. I mean, we can, and it could be useful. But for now, uh, we'll move on. Okay, so if you remember, this is the um, pinout diagram for the Arduino Due. Right now, it's, it's oriented differently. Um, if you were to take this picture and uh, do left 90 degrees to the left, you would end up with this. Um, if you can tell, here's the A0 to A7, which is A0 to A7 here. Oops. We have the, um, the spy interface right here, which is just right here. And hopefully you can kind of see what's going on there. Okay, so what's really interesting about this problem is that the ArduCam and the, um, the SD card um, reader, uh, they both use spy, therefore it's, both their MOSI, the master out, slave in, um, their serial clock lines, and their master in, um, slave out, or sorry, sub out um, uh, lines, they're going to be connected to the same thing. So as you can see here, let me use a different color. Mm, I don't know what to use. Um, I like this one. Okay, so just looking at its MOSI line, which is this, it travels down there, down there. If you look, they end up intercepting the exact same spot. Um, if you don't know how breadboard works, so one sec, control V, control V. So if you don't know how breadboard works, let me um, show that to you real quick. So, so when you have a breadboard, you tend to have um, um, this positive line right here. This, all of these are connected together. 
And then all of these are connected together. And same applies to the top ones. This is basically where you plug in power. For example, if I wanted to plug in 3.3 volts, oops, 3.3 okay, volts. Um, basically, anything you plug along this here will be connected to the 3.3 volts. And this could be like ground. So yeah, these are typically used for um, power and ground, the rails. And then down here, these are used for just sync signal lines. They're going to be connected this way. So these are connected that way, these are connected that way. And this separator here in the middle actually separates um, this and this. So you can pl put in all your data lines, whatever else you want into these, and they're just connected um, in that direction. Okay. So if you look here, um, you can see that um, we have options to plug 3.3 um, volts into both of these devices. Um, remember the ArduCam, you can either plug in 5 volts or 3.3 volts. And I highly recommend you use 3.3 volts because first of all, um, we do have the option, um, the Arduino DUA gives you the ability to use 3.3 or 5 volts. In this case, we want to use 3.3 volts because um, what happens when you plug in 5 volts, um, basically all it does is that it steps it down back to 3.3 volts. And you actually, it takes heat, it, you actually lose energy and, you know, it takes some it takes effort by the step down regulator in order to turn it back into 3.3 volts. And therefore you're actually um, wasting electricity, you know, power from your CubeSat batteries. And you know that those batteries are very, um, they're very precious for us to, um, you know, take care of because in space, you know, especially for one new CubeSat, we don't have, too much power available. So you want to do things as efficiently as you can. Also the five volts, you know, it produces heat. You, you don't want to run into thermal issues. You know, if the camera gets too hot, especially in space where there's no air to um, circulating for it to cool down, um, it can get so hot that it just shuts off or stops working. And you don't want to, you don't want to risk that. So just stick to 3.3 volts, especially, if, you know, if you have the option, um, because it's just much more convenient and just a better choice overall. Okay, so since we're in, we're talking about power, um, we do have the ground pin right here. I hope you guys know what ground is. I'm not sure if you do. And then in the SD card reader, we have two grounds. Basically, all grounds have to be connected to the exact same source. Not only do the grounds here and here have to be connected, they all have to be connected to the Arduino DUA as well. And that's in order for things to know uh, their true voltage levels relative to each other. Because whenever you measure five volts, that's always relative to something. Ground, we just call that um, ground because it's our reference point where it resembles zero volts. Um, technically, if ground have like three volts, and then something was plugged into it as five volts, the difference would be two volts. And since voltage is a potential difference, you'd actually see two volts. Um, sorry, I might be confusing you guys. Um, we can talk more about that another time. But anyway, it's just really important for you guys to have ground connected between all devices in order for them to know exactly their voltage levels. And that's very important for logic. The Arduino DUA only uses 3.3 volt logic. And if ground happens to be different somewhere. Um, oh, note by the way that there's two grounds here, two grounds here. Um, there's another ground over here. I just know that all of those are connected. So whenever you wanna use ground, you can choose any. In this case, right here, I have the Arduino DUA, uh, the ground to this rail. Um, because 
it's just the shortest distance. Oh, whoops, sorry. Okay. It's just the shortest distance from the, to the breadboard, but just know that they're all connected, so it doesn't matter which one you use. And then I connected all the grounds of the um, SD card reader slash writer um, to that rail, and then also um, of the camera as well. And as you can see, here's the cameras, here are the two SD card reader ones, and they're all connected to ground. So now everything, every time a, a wire sends a signal, they'll all be relative to each other, which is very important. Sometimes if you don't connect grounds, um, uh, they won't be able to understand each other. You can think of voltage as like one screaming way too loud and one too softly so they can't hear them. Or I don't know, it's <laughs> that example, but you know what I mean. Okay, so um, again, the camera uses both SPI and I2C. SPI is for data transfer, like transferring images. I2C is for configuration. Um, the SD card reader simply uses SPI just um, for data transfer as well in terms of storing whatever inside the SD card. Um, it's supposed to be plugged in in here, so it would look something like that would be plugged in. And so it uses SPI to both read and write. And what I mean by write is that uh, it can send information from here to um, the, Ar the, Ar the Arduino DUE if it is requested to. Okay, so now, um, before I get into all of this, uh, let's look really quick at um, the code from the last lecture. Remember we used this, the, um, the Articam Mini 5 megapixel OV56 42 plus functions, and that was just so we can run the host application and see that the camera was working and sending pictures. Um, again, we're going to go over this type of code or this code another time. Right now, we want to go over the basics and just setting things up so you can have a general feel of how things are working. Now, if you remember from the, la the last two lectures, we saw exactly how we can get this folder here, the Arducam folder. And you know we have the Articam Mini OV5642. So we're going to go under Mini. Um, this the example we went over in the last two um, lectures was this one. And now we are going over Articam Mini Capture 2SD. And so this is the one. Ignore this down here. I had just tested it earlier, so I uploaded it. But anyway, so if you look here. There's actually two CS pins, and remember in SPI, every interface, you can hook up as many sensors as you want to SPI. The only difference is going to be the chip select pin. So right here, if you remember, um, if we go back to the example from the last two lectures, they use the CS pin as seven for the camera. In this example, they are keeping it as seven. They just titled it SPI CS since there's an another SPI device, which is the SD card reader. They're titling it differently. They're just calling it SPI CS. And this is going to be for the camera. And this one, obviously, SDCS. Um, it's going to be for the SD card reader slash writer. Um, and they chose nine. And I labeled that here. The Arducam uses seven for the chip select. And the SD reader slash writer uses nine for the chip select. And then if you recall, um, the SPI interface is right here. So if you look closely, this pin right here goes for MISO. This one right here goes for the serial clock line. This one goes for reset, which we're not using. We don't need that, so ignore it. This one right here is ground, which is connected to all the grounds. So we can ignore it because we're just going to use, we can use any ground. And then this middle pin right here is the MOSI line. And then this pin here is the 5 volts, again, which we're going to ignore. We're going to use 3.3 volts to power our devices. Um, oops, if we look here, we have the option to do either 
5 volts or 3.3 volts. Um, for the SD card reader, you can use either. I, you might as well just use 3.3 volts as well. Um, we can ignore the 5 volt line. Um, if we look at the pins for this uh, more closely, so there's two grounds. There's a power option, so you can either choose 3.3 volts or 5 volts. Um, and then there's the chip select for its spiner face. Again, that is 9. You can change this, by the way. You can change it to 13 and rewire it, but we're going to stick to what the original example has. And then there's the MOSI, which is shared between with the ArduCam. And then the serial clock, which is also shared with the ArduCam. That controls how fast data is transferred. And then there's the MISO, which is also shared with the ArduCam. And then there's ground. OK, so now that you guys know what all the pins are, quick note, um, there's two pins here. I don't know why. Um, I think it's so you can plug it into a breadboard and it'd be more stable. But for example, the ground, this pin and this pin, they're shorted. Everything, they're just connected, so they're good. Like, you can choose either this one or this one. It doesn't matter. They're all the same. They're both connect. They're connected. OK. So now, um, if you look closely, uh, we use the 3.3 volts here. I put it into this voltage rail. And from that rail, I plug in the 3.3 volts um, to the ArduCam. And then in this rail, the 3.3 volts goes to the SD card reader. I use the ground up here because it's closest. I already went over that. And then, um, so here's a, a big point actually. In the example, okay, so from the first, the last two lectures, we went over this example. And we went over the fact that the ArduCam uses two different um, I squared C buses. Um, so they have the typical one that you always see down here. Oh, that's not a good color for that. So they have the typical one here, and then they have an extra one up here. And you can use either. Um, in the example, it seems that if you look at the Articam Mini Capture 2SD example, um, you can see that they're including the wire library, which is just the I2C bus. If we look for another instance of wire, it seems like there's only, it's only mentioned one. Note that they're actually using wire and not wire one, meaning that they're using, they're using this. But since, I don't want you guys to have to keep rewiring things or such. You guys can easily just use this again, the same way that um, this example from the last two lectures, they used it. Watch. Remember, if you use Arduino Due, use the wire one bus, which is uh, this right here. So let's just stick to that. Let's stick to that logic. So. We're going to go to the example of a Articam Mini Capture 2 QSD, and we're going to change wire.begin to wire1.begin. And now that enables us to use this top one. And that's just so you guys don't have to keep rewiring things, or you know, if you guys, um, once you build a CubeSat and everything's you know tightly in there, you don't, you won't be able to just switch wires. So in the software, you could configure which I2C bus you're using. And let's just stick to this one for now. In the future, you're more than welcome to use this. Remember, I'm only here to teach you guys the basics and understand everything as much as, as possible. And I'm going to do my best to be there for you guys, answer any questions, and help you through the process. But you will be responsible you know, for writing that final superscript for your entire CubeSat and controlling all the operations, which is honestly very rewarding and very exciting because, I mean, once you learn how to do all this, um, you will be able to do so much more in, in the industry and in the world and just be anyone you want. You can be an astronaut, I'm sure. Like they, they like these, these skills. Anyway, 
So going back to this, um, we are going to stick to using the serial SDA1 and SCL1, as you can see right here. And it is connected to the Articam I2C interface. And um, we're able to do that because we just changed this to a wire1.begin. So now, if you don't do that, watch what happens. Here, let me plug in my, my joy real quick. Okay, okay, let me get rid of the one. Right now I physically have my Arduino Due connected this way where um, the camera is using the, oops, where the camera is using SDA1 and SCL1. But in the code, I wrote it in such a way that it's going to want to use these two pins instead which if you look closely is SDA and SCL, which over here is just the bottom one. So right now I don't, I don't have my wires connected to these, but in the software I just told it to look for these. Therefore my camera should not be able to configure. Watch, let's try that. Let's upload it. It's uploading. This is what the Arduino Dewey does. It looks like it's failing, but it's not. It's just that's the way it uploads. It's going to upload successfully, but it shouldn't be able to detect the camera. And there you go. I cannot, I can't find the OV564 module. And if you get that error, it's probably because you didn't change this to a one. If you had it wired the same way we did with this example, the plus functions one. So now if I do this, let's see what happens. Okay, well that uploads. Let me go back to this real quick. So, um, Okay, let's just go back. I don't wanna stress you guys out with keeping track of what's going on too much. Me switching back and forth. <laughs> okay, so once it uploads, yay. See, as you can see, the camera was detected and it's currently taking pictures at the moment. And Again, we're going to go over the code another time right now. I want to show you how to set everything up. But see, just simply by putting a one here allows the camera to be configured with a due and be detected and understood. Um, so I'm going to unplug the camera real quick. I don't want to do that. Okay. So that's that. So, um, Okay, so just look closely at this and see how everything's connected. I hopefully it just makes sense just by looking at this. Um, some confusing things for people is that the fact that, for example, there's three wires or two sensors using the exact same wire from the Arduino Due. That is possible with I2C and SPY. That's what's supposed to happen. They share the common MOSI line they share the common MISO line and the serial clock line for SPY. And then for devices, say you use 100 different components that use the I2C bus, they will all use the same exact line. So you're gonna need a bigger breadboard. <laughs> or you can just, if you have a breadboard, you can easily, um, say, I have a, say I have like 10 components, you can plug in the, the Say we're using the SDA line, this coming from the Due, and then you have sensors coming out of nowhere. You can have a little jumper here and then keep putting in sensors, have another little jumper here and then keep putting more sensors. 
you know what I mean, and they all would share the same exact line. Okay. All right. So, okay. So yes, once we have everything connected, um, hopefully, you know, just by thinking about it, um, you're able to do this. But if not, you can easily follow this uh, wiring diagram right here and do it yourselves um, by referencing it. Um, I think I explained everything. We're using 3.3 volts for everything. The MOSI MISO zero clock lines are shared. We're using the SD1 SCL1. Um, I think that's pretty much it. If you guys have questions, please just email me, send me a message on Facebook, whatever you want, and I will be there to help you. Um, once you guys have access to the hardware, this yeah, you are definitely more than welcome to just keep asking me questions. Okay, so going back, um, I'm able to run this code. So let's see what happens again. Oh, I just connected it. Okay. Okay, I just plugged in. Okay, I just plugged it in. Okay. So what happens when you have everything successfully connected, uh, you should have uh, this. Basically the SPI interface is okay, the SD card's detected, um, the OV5642 camera is detected, and it starts capturing. Um, it seems like it takes a picture every five seconds, and you can definitely configure that in the code. <coughs> We're going to go over the code soon. Um, right now, don't look at it because it looks scary, but I promise you it's easier than you think. And this does take a while for many people to learn, and that is totally okay. You know, people spend years coding all this stuff. You guys are getting very solid examples um, and seeing exactly how everything works, and that's a huge advantage. You guys are learning this earlier than many people, and I feel like this is going to make you guys um, a lot more um, useful and wanted out there in the industry by the time you're done with college. <laughs> okay, so right now it's taking pictures. We're going to go over the code, another lecture. I want to see, I want to show you guys the results of these pictures. So right now I'm going to stop this. I'm going to unplug the Arduino Due. I'm going to pull out the SD card. I know you guys can't see, but I'm just plugging it into my computer. And then there you go. As you can see, it's been taking pictures this whole time. Um, they're not great quality because I need to screw in the lens correctly. And also you can change settings. We're gonna go over how to do that in the future. But for now, this is exactly, you just easily plug it into your computer. Um, and this is the SD card right here, the USB drive F and you can get pictures. In the future, you guys are going to want to program. Um, so in your CubeSat, you're probably going to have a chip that acts like an SD card, and you're going to store pictures in there, and then you're going to probably, you know, you guys will figure it out, but this is probably the type of stuff you're going to send back to Earth. Instead of my monitors here, you'll see a picture of Earth, much higher quality. It's, it's If you learn to do that, that's huge. and you guys are on your way there. So this is very exciting. There's many, many more applications in life to this. Um, all this code that you're learning, um, the electronics, the way a DUA works, you can use this for anything. Biomedical, like, you know, any type of engineering, science, like this stuff is everywhere from um, uh, the street lights, <laughs> or, you know, the traffic lights to, um, you know, yeah, spacecraft, any anything in between, anything outside of that, this stuff is very applicable. So I hope you this made sense to you. If it didn't, please shoot me a message and I will get back to you. I'm looking forward to going over a lot more in the future and you are on your way there. Just hang in there. I know it's stressful seeing all this for the first time. You know, again, it takes practice. 
The best way I learn things is by having personal projects. I just order a bunch of sensors, random things, and you know, I'll make a home security system or like if I wanna have two things communicate through an antenna or even through Wi-Fi, you know, there's boards that support Wi-Fi and internet. And, you know, I just do little projects and it gets me excited and um, I think it's really interesting. And that's how I learned a lot of stuff. So, um, of course, you guys will need to practice more on your own aside from just watching these lectures, but I hope that these lectures do give you a good foundation of what's going on for now. There's more to learn. There's always more to learn, and that's what's awesome. Okay, thank you guys. I'll see you guys next time, and thanks for watching.